All right, ladies and gents, this one is low and it's legendary. We've got some two low elo legends here on the lower end of what you typically see. In fact, I would wager that this is probably the lowest matchup going on right now online, which also makes it for an additional level of hype. The lowest elo game going on in the world. That's right. In the entire world of like 7 billion plus people, this is the lowest elo game going on right now. And we have two players that are sub 300 elo. Blue has 15 wins and about 50 losses, but is still trucking through these ranked games. Blue is called Ooze Hover, uh, playing as the Tootens. And uh, Tootens are lovely civilization. A lot of beginners love this Civ. I used to play this Civ all the time back in the day. And then we have Yuma. And Yuma is a player that we actually covered earlier on in the day. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you may remember Yuma as the player who tried keyword tried to wall up Arabia with Palisades, Stonewalls, like 10 gates. Enemy got through with a little bit of army. Yuma had some problems. So already what I'm going to say right now is that I'm curious on if Red's going to play it the same, right? Is Red still going to try and rely on walls? Or will Red say, maybe I need to make more defensive army or maybe I need to be aggressive? These are the questions I ask myself. We'll have to find out. Now, we don't know a lot about Blue, but we can say that Either Blue struggles to control it, or Blue just doesn't know that there is some food decay. Um, again, I, I've i said this a million times by now, but it's really complicated with this game because a lot of the details of it, you have you find out watching people like me or you know, learning as you discuss the game with people. Um, so unfortunately, Blue's not getting the full 100 food from all the sheep because of the inefficiency here. And another little quirky thing that I've realized with Blue is that Blue doesn't set a gather point for the town center. So this is a really fresh player. Like, Red will have a new villager coming out. Let's see where it goes. Ready? New villager and new villager will go to a straggler tree. You see that? So that is Red selecting the town center, selecting a task, and then when the new villagers come, they go directly towards it. And I don't think that's something that Blue is aware of because the default spot for a villager to pop out is, boop, right here in front of the TC. All right. Blue with the Lumber Camp, though. Oh, pretty good start, actually. As far as build orders go. And Blue did go for the classic scouting pattern. Uh, didn't really find a lot of extra resources at home. Went forward, found the enemy, but thankfully is coming home. I'm sure Blue's mom and dad really missed him. So glad that he's come home for the holidays. Red has made a barracks next to the town center. <laughs> but from what I remember about this player, he made a barracks early on in the other game, and he made two militia to protect his town. They were not, it was not offensive. Like, um, the term we use for, like, two or three militia in Dark Age is a drush, because it's a Dark Age rush. Um, if anything, it's like a, it's like a dree fence. It's defensive defense. Did a defense. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, but yeah, my guess is Red might do that again. Um, and Red also never farmed around the TC anyways. So Red's going to farm around the mill. So yeah, this barrack position is completely fine. Uh, here you have Red Scout overseeing the whole construction process. You really have to pay attention to the villagers. They will not work if you give them an opportunity. And yep, see, he got yelled at, and he's going to make some more precious houses there. Good stuff, Red. So I, I'm a big fan of Red's style. Um, Blue seems like a player who has a little bit more knowledge on certain aspects of the game. Uh, like, you know, the early lumber camp, the mill. Um, but I, I don't know. It's like that's simply building placement I'm talking about. Red has done a better job at creating villagers and all that. But remember when Red lost in that other game we saw, it was the same deal. So Red goes for like a really pretty economy and then Red tries to wall it up. And that's not so easy on one of the most open maps that you'll see in Age of Empires 2. Wow, okay, wait a second. Wait a second. Blue is going to stone right now. Also Blue Scout. Should we take bets on if Blue's ever going to find this? Oh, well, okay. 
Really bad timing for that joke. I just thought that there was a chance that someone at this rank would forget the scout was there because it was behind the trees. Yeah, Blue definitely doesn't know the basics of at least doing a few rings around your TC, right? Like, having said that, somehow Blue found all the sheep. Nope, nope, nope. There's two sheep there. But it's possible that Blue's going to go feudal age with 12 villagers. Tutans have cheap farms, so that's what Blue's relying on for the most part for food. And then there's just that one villager on stone. Also, the scouts gone just passing there. And I think Blue just kind of, like, clicks the scout to this corner. And I bet you Blue clicked the scout to the other corner. I think this guy's just going to run all the way over here. Blue will find a sheep, which is nice. And now Red is bringing in boar number two. Um, Red likes to do this. Red will click a boar and then tell the villager that attracted the boar to go build a farm. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Red. Oh, it's so sad. Well, hey, in the first game, Red killed an elephant with the scout. So it's better for Red. The sad thing is, and Red doesn't know this because of the inexperience, but if Red would have just let the villager stand there, his friends would have been firing arrows too, and the boar would have died without the villager dying. So that's a little painful, but that's why you just make another villager. That's fine. Nice little square houses on both sides here for Red. Those are the only houses. Red found the sheep when Blue tried to send it home. Blue has now scouted all the corners of the map, and Blue's in the next age. And Blue actually is going to find these sheep now, too. So that's good for Blue. But Blue didn't bring in any boars. And now Blue says, okay, I'm going to go to gold. Let's see what happens with the new villagers again from Blue. Okay, so Blue set a gather point. But set a gather point to an area where there's no tasks to do. Now, guys, I have learned a lot over the years. Okay, I go back and I watch my early Loela Legend cast. And I was such a noob, man. I didn't understand the low ethyl players. But over the years, it's come back. Some of it's come back to me. And then also, I've, I've understood because I've listened to comments and messages from people. And so my guess right now, based on feedback from the community, is that Blue really likes to have control over certain things. And that Blue also likes to know where the villagers are coming in at. So like... It's similar to some people making their buildings up against the edge of the map, so they know, okay, I need this building, go to the edge of the map. Which I think Red might do, if I recall how Red likes to play. But like, I think for Blue, Blue wants to know where to look for all the new eco. Um, anyways, Blue's going to make a tower there. Doesn't really protect anything, but, oh, you know what it is? These guys want a peaceful village to live in. They just bought a house together. Oh, it's so sweet. Also, what in the world is through that window? Did they board up that window? I'm trying to figure out. I could see what the they tried to do with the design. Like, that actually looks like... Okay, so I think you're, you're seeing part of the wall. Then you've got that. Whoa, the windows are different. Whoa, dang, man. Well, maybe they should take this house instead. This house looks a little nicer inside. But yeah, tower on the hill. Obviously, if red comes over here, red might see that. 18 villagers for blue, 20 for red. And blue's going to place the lumber camp all the way over here. So these guys uh, off to a very far land to chop the trees for whatever reason. I'm impressed with Red. Red has changed from what we saw two hours ago. Red is now making the buildings right next to the town instead of up against the edge of the map. But yeah, we saw the same thing. Barracks, stable, archery range. And then Red also was building up towards a castle, but Red just never made it to Castle Age. Hmm. Blue did go for the eco upgrades. It's a very good observation. Wood upgrade, farm upgrade, wheelbarrow as well. So things are going to be pretty efficient. Like, I think in the long run, Blue's economy might look a little bit better because of that. Red's at a weird spot where all the sheep are gone now, so your food is going to slowly start disappearing. 
Electricity exists in AOE. Those lights aren't flickering in the houses with a lantern slash torch light. True. Literally broken game. The devs need to fix it. I mean, come on. There's no flickering from the fireplace. It's winter time. There's no smoke from the... There's never any smoke from the chimney. I just realized the chimneys are different, though. Is that freaking anyone else out? All right, the things you learn. Okay, we got some houses now from Blue. I like how Blue brought the sheep home, but said we're not going to eat the sheep. They're the family pets. I've recently started playing Farming Simulator 22, and I'm beyond addicted to it. It is so fun. Check out the T90 Extras YouTube channel, by the way, if you want some of the episodes with my bro. But man, we are building up a beautiful farm, and we just got some chickens. We got some greenhouses with some lettuce and some strawberries. It's very nice. So maybe Blue's kind of playing Age of Empires like that. You know, really, really cares for these things. Isn't in a big rush, which is what I like about the farming sim game. Mm. Let's look at the resources collected here. Wow, very close. Very, very, very close here. Red's going to make the market over here. Okay. Man-at-arms now for blue. So it is possible blue is just kind of wants a little bit of everything here. Remember, blue went to the TC. Wait, did blue get town watch? Blue got town watch. So I think blue's like, I'm not completely sure what I should do in all instances. But I'm just going to research everything. So went for wheelbarrow and town watch and the TC. Those are the only two techs you can do. Man-at-arms is the only tech you can do. Horse color is the only tech you can do. Lumber upgrade is the only tech you can do. That's a that's a pretty decent approach, I'd say, if you're not really sure how to play the game. Just get the buildings, get your researches in, still try and produce villagers all the time. All right. You, list, you missed the last farming sim? Well, we didn't do it last week, so I don't know how much you've been following it, but... Wow, another tower from Blue. So Blue actually has set things up, so there's almost a direct line of vision across the map. Yet yeah, look at this. Interesting. Guys, I think Blue is has retained knowledge from, like, the original tutorial in this game. Do you guys remember what was uh, what the original tutorial in the game talked about in regards to towers? There's a remix that we play on stream from time to time. He did get supplies as well. Okay. Making some spearmen now. Might even make some man-at-arms. Might make some skirms. Might also make some archers. But back to what I was saying, the campaign said, it'd be a good idea to build a watchtower on this hill. I mean... Seems like Blue has retained that knowledge and Blue's applied that knowledge and we'll see, of course, what Red will do. The problem is you probably want to place it on hills that are actually helpful for you. Um, Like, this is on a hill. This is on a hill. This is on a hill. But there's nothing of importance around said hill. Now, the issue for Red when Red lost that game earlier is the opponent rushed. That has not happened here. Red has done a much better job with the economy. I would give Red's base a 7 out of 10 for how it looks. And now Red's going to stonewall too. That's going to take a long time. This clearly shows that Red's not going to fight Blue. So if anyone out there is rooting for Ooze Hoover or Ooze Hover or Hover, whatever, Hover, um, I wouldn't worry too much. I swear, though, any time I've seen someone with the gather point issue that Blue does, they almost always lose. Like, that's such a big thing. Like, the, you want your villagers to have a task when they come out of the TC. Did Red notice that? Oh, 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 moonwalk. All right. I did notice that. All right. Gotta love the old scout moonwalk. And hey, Red's making some archers. We all have bloodlines for blue. Yeah, blue's just researching everything, man. Blue's just like, I don't know what this stuff does, but I'm going to click it and hope the towers can defend me. Hmm. I hope blue doesn't research every blacksmith technology because that's going to spend all the resources that blue has at the moment. 
obviously getting those technologies is important. The general rule that I give people is get to like click up to castle age, get to that point, and then you can start to spam research. Because castle age is a much bigger swing than feudal age. Like one night can just do so much damage. And oh, look at this. We've got a castle here from Yuma and we could have the first blood. I guess it's not the first blood because there was blood when Red lost a villager to a boar earlier. But yeah, this scout's like, hey, I've got bloodlines and I'm about to make you have bloodlines because I killed you. No, not really. But anyways, villagers on the uh, run here. Red has brought over some archers. I think the most interesting topic for me now is actually will this tower go up for blue? And will Red even notice any of this? Like, Red could be following that scout still. Oh, it is following the scout. And the scout's gonna sacrifice himself for his friend. The tower's at 99.69%. It's like one hit away. Oh, God. Go finish it, man. You can do it. You could trip and fall into that tower and you'd finish building it. And okay, well, we're seeing just how complicated the whole tower thing is for people to deal with, right? Because red, a little confused. Blue's now actually making man-at-arms. Again, definitely an AI player. Like, definitely a player who plays the campaigns. Man-at-arms should actually be able to do enough damage here to push this back, though. At least if that villager wants to finish the tower. I doubt blue is able to click this and realize the percentage. Blue just realizes there's bad men there, and I, that's scary for me. Um, Blue's just like, yeah, well, we got supplies earlier, so infantry's cheaper, and the, like I said, the men at arms will actually deal with it. There goes the villager to finish that. So this seems to be the area that Blue really cares about the most. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the town is joining in on the walling. And that man at arm died there, but now we've got another villager going down here. Dang. So, Red is under some pressure. Red still has the lead in this game, I would say. Especially because Red is making archers with the Britons, which is really, really good. Not sure about the whole long swordsman approach. And the first thing Blue does in Castlage is research the stone shaft mining upgrade for faster stone mining. That's not cheap, by the way. Also, this... This is kind of funny. This tower is one hit away from going up, but Blue has used it as a bait. And that villager dies now, so this tower is going to go up, and this tower is going to go up. Let's see how many hits it actually was. Bam. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay. Uh, correct move from Red, though. Red says, well, the archers don't seem to be the ticket right now. Let's make some knights. Knights are awesome here. Archers are also really awesome. The problem for red was no upgrades and no micro. Okay. Tootons also get murder holes for free. So this is, oh boy. Oh, this is painful. Oh, the towers are doing their job. Red is like, what do I do? There's a market now for blue. And red still working on full walling this. Um, is full walled to the edge here? You can tell Red's looking at that right now. And Red's going to drop another defensive castle. Wow, that's a lot of defense when you've only been attacked by man-at-arms. But sometimes the rest of the game is easier to play when you feel safe. Still, we have not seen any blacksmith upgrades in this game from either player. We're at the true low elo. However, their economy upgrades are pretty good. And these towers are doing work against the knights, and the unit themselves are being upgraded now because blue's going for longsword. And man, the towers are dominating. Oh, how many knights are gonna die to this? Obviously, like, if you're more experienced, you know, guard tower could be really good here. The attack upgrades. Red just, I think more than anything, Red just really wants the stone. And Red's more of an archer guy anyways, because Red's Britain, so the Britons will happily toss away some knights. They're like, who cares about the knights, really? We, we don't need knights. It's painful. Um, this tower, four kills. This tower, one kill. This tower, one kill. These are expensive losses for Red. But Red will have really safe economy behind the walls. I just hope that Red, 
lets this be now. Like, I hope red doesn't contest these towers. Also, look, like, blue's going for all the possible researches within the buildings that are there. Look, elite skirm. Boom, bunch of skirmishers. One archer. Boom, bunch of skirmishers. Then we've got arson now. That's cool. I think we saw squires as well. Guys, look at the idle TC time for a second. It's unbelievable, right? And also the vill count. They both have 35 villagers. How is the game this even? How? Look. They're going back and forth on who's collected the most resources. Probably just due to, like, the farmers dropping off the food. This game is... Look at that! This game is unbelievably close. The red's going to complete castle number two. Does blue see this, by the way? Blue does see that. Blue might as well be an AI at the moment. Also, red just created one more vill. Blue crew's creating one more vill. Also, blue figures it's a good time to get loom. Does red have loom? Red does have loom. Ooh, whoa. The market knowledge, though. Oh, Yuma. Yuma with the knowledge here. Yuma's going to try and rush up to imp here, I think, guys. Sold a bunch of wood off for gold there. Is clearly saving up for that thousand... Up. Yeah, that thousand food. Doesn't actually have that many farms, but still could click up to the Imperial Age. Oh, God. Blue's making petards. <laughs> oh, God. Blue, can we get some knights, too? We haven't seen it all yet. We're going to see Archer. We have Skirms. We have Longswords. We'll have Pikemen. We'll have Monks. We need petards. We need Teutonic Knights. I guess we need some Siege. <laughs> Now, it takes two petards to take down a stone wall, so I'm ho hoping that's what Blue's thinking. But there's a chance that Blue is just going to try and, like, dive bomb a castle, which would not necessarily work. Also, of all the technologies to see somebody research, you, you got to love the techs we're seeing. These are the low ELO legend technologies, right? Murder holes. Oh, no. Murder holes. Okay, that, that is helpful because if they get to the base of your castle or tower, your castle still fires. Fervor makes your monks a little bit faster. Wow, look at the text, actually. Fervor, monk faster, herbal medicine, units heal up faster inside buildings. Sanctity, your monks have more HP. Heated shot is a trap. Guys, don't research heated shot, all right? People think it's chemistry. It's not. It doesn't make your shots hotter, all right? You're still just as ugly as you were before with your shots. What it does do is it makes your arrow fire from towers and castles better against ships. But do not confuse it with chemistry, which is what makes your arrows have flames. All right. Red has lost a lot in this game, but it's time for the light cap to go out and scout the enemy. For the first time ever, the scout moves out to scout the enemy to report back to his friends and family what exactly is going on over here. And this is the journey. This is the path. And the light cap is just passing. Man, look at what Red has seen so far. He's seen pretty much every unit Blue's making. Didn't take any damage whatsoever. Most OP scout ever. Also saw the monk with the relic. And <laughs> what? He now sees a castle going up in the corner of the map. Look at the mini map. He just clicked right to the corner. <laughs> this is the most effective scout I've ever seen in my life, man. And, and there's now no army chasing either, so great job from Red. And is Red going to do anything about this now? Oh, no way, dude. No way. He's now going to deny the castle? What? Okay, well, she found out now, so this is getting serious now for this light calf. These villagers are going to try and finish this. Light calf sees them. And now the light cab is being fought off by the enemy town. This could be close, guys. This could be close. It's a very close fight. Oh, no. The light cab clicked the castle. A misclick there. And the most effective scout ever is going to die to a villager who has a hammer. But I'll tell you what. At least that was an effective trip. The scout was probably going to die anyways, to be honest. So, um, I hope no one... I hope no one says that when I die someday. Like, well, T90 was going to die eventually anyway, so... At least it was quick when he got hit by that car. Anyways, this got super morbid. Uh, what is Blue's plan here? Look how Blue has stacked the units. Look, 
Couple pikemen here, couple Teutonic Knights here, couple petards, couple skirms, couple swordsmen, couple towers, little villager on stone. There's like a big old line here. And now Red is just walking past this. It'd be so funny if Red could somehow sneak beyond it. Look at Blue! What a crazy line we've got. Oh, there's another light calf. Oh god, round two. Another scouting party from Red. And that scout's gonna go down. We do have Imp on the way for Red. 45 villagers. Blue is at 36 villagers. Blue has made a lot of army, but doesn't know what to commit to. Just a little bit of everything, which is an approach some people take. A lot of players feel like they can't go wrong if they make a little bit of everything, because they're going to have the right type of unit out there at some point. Okay. Another light cap running through. Red really likes this strategy. <laughs> uh, I like how they run past petards every single time, as if that's a normal thing to see. And Blue's like, let's castle this spot. This spot is far too important. And honestly, this castle is way better than this castle, but... With crenellations, with more upgrades, those castles are going to be really tough for Red to push through. And it will mean that Red will almost have to siege Blue down. That's relic number three for Blue as well. And we know how important those relics can be for long-term gold income. Okay, Red is dropping a castle here, and Blue can see that. Oh, Red, don't build it next to enemy houses. People live there. They're going to snitch. Blue sees this. The good news for Red is that Red still has time to delete this. As long as Red knows that you can delete it, Red has time to delete this. And, okay, Red just bails on the idea, which is smart thinking. Bails on the idea there, too. And these villagers may die, but that's the best for Red's future. Now they're going to make a run for it, it seems. I mean, why not, right? You're probably going to die anyways. Um, I think Blue's probably got this covered. The stable will go down. Okay, Ballistics now for Red. That's a very important upgrade. Red also has one Longbow. I'm hoping we'll see more because Longbows can be really tough to stop. Red's probably not looking at anything except for these villagers right now. Really shows how important having ballistics is. Like, look, this castle doesn't hit anything. There we go. Blue's getting fortified wall, and then guard tower, and then ballistics, and then masonry. All really good techs. Blue just didn't think about them for a while. And we see trebuchets now from red. And I think Red is concerned that Blue has a lot of the map. It must feel a little overwhelming at the moment. And I wonder how attentive Blue is to this. I wonder if Blue will have known that those villagers went up there. It doesn't really seem like it. Also, this gold and this gold will be really important. We're going to have a tower there from Blue. This is an amazing game. I really hope people out there are enjoying it. Blue wants to trap in the enemy. And even add some stone walls there. These villagers could be up to no good. Three relics for blue, zero relics for red. But red's going to make three monks after all these monk upgrades. That's a lot of investment for monk upgrades. I don't know if that's necessarily worth it, but... Red's probably like, well, monks like to read, right? So that one looks cool, that one looks cool, block printing. Yeah, it all makes sense. So, okay. Not much you can really do about those trebuchets hitting your towers, though, if you're blue. At least this gives blue time to do other things on the map. Still not a single blacksmith upgrade, though, for either player. It's going to make castles and towers very strong. This tower cannot range the gold with no blacksmith upgrades. I think even if Bodkinera was in, it wouldn't be able to range. I think with Bracer, it maybe could, but it might give him vision. Yeah, so you have the vision to see it, and that could lead to Blue actually attacking those villagers. These villagers are just making houses now. 
All right. Well, you need a place to live before you expand the economy. Oh, whoa. Blue is using two skirmishers, excuse me, four skirmishers to attack a trap. Oh, God. Is there a hole there? Oh, my God. <laughs> what? Blue's like, get out of here. <laughs> no. Oh, don't tell me, man. Okay, Blue didn't click the next one just yet. Oh my god, don't lose trebs to this. No! Oh, so painful. So painful. What a great heads up play from Blue, though. And Blue has a treb here now. Like, Red needs to use these Cavalier. The Cavalier can deal with this. This is going to really wake Red up, I think. Like, if Red's heart wasn't already beating really fast earlier, Red's heart's going to start to beat really fast now. The panic will set in, and Red's going to realize that this needs to be addressed. And Blue's being a little ambitious here with the walls. I mean, as you can see, one tile not being walled is an issue. And okay, Red's going to click the Cav out now. Blue hasn't really seen any Cavalier all game. Didn't even see any Knights. Just saw the couple Light Cav. Great job from Red to have that hidden here. As we see Elite Longbowman being researched by the Britain player. And we have Elite Teutonic Knight being researched by the Teuton player. Like, come on. This is this is an amazing, amazing game here. And the castle stands. Uh, Red, if I were you, I would actually engage. Live your life, but maybe you want to clear that up? Red doesn't really seem that interested. Blue's at 34 villagers. So Blue has stopped making villagers. The blue's not floating as many resources. Like, mainly the gold's a bit of an issue. But losing those trebs are going to hurt. Now, obviously, the relics are adding up now. So almost 1,000 gold has been brought in from the three relics. And that will continue as the game goes on. But 34 villagers is what you would maybe expect of this elo, but it is going to be a concern. Is this Viper versus Leary? I could definitely understand how you could confuse the two. I think the Batards made the whole... Wait a second! Wait a second! Did I miss... Thank you for bringing that up. Are the Batards... Oh my god, we have to go back. We have to go back. Oh my god. Oh my god! <laughs> How did I miss that? Oh my god! Blue, who had three Batards earlier had broken down the wall with the batards to then be able to kill the trebs. Yo! Great call. Great call there. I, You know, I was thinking that it was weird that Red didn't finish that wall. But yeah, and then obviously if you're paying attention, Blue ends up killing these trebuchets. This is a 280 elo player. He had three batards sitting there for God knows how long. It was like he just knew. And the moment arised, and he was just like, this is my time to shine, baby. This is my time to be a legend. Red rewalled it and everything, too. Surgical. Surgical. Okay, we're back to live time now. That was disgusting, man. Uh, these villagers are still over here, by the way. An important thing to talk about with Red is Red's not mining any stone. Red is actually completely out of stone right now. That's a big deal when you have three castles here. We are going to see a town center in the north. Blue does not know about that. Red's going to make some rams. Red has a treb. Um, <laughs> red skirmishers probably need to move. <laughs> Guys, move. <laughs> can't hit me. Can't hit me. You suck, treb. You can't hit me. You can't hit me. Ow! What a way to go out. And the other guys don't even move. Like, after a certain period of time, it'd start to smell there, would it not? Okay. Red's been taking all this gold, though, which is so important. Skirmishers will kill a crossbow. And we have more petards from Blue. Blue's gonna try the same strategy. So Blue's thinking, I have to take that treb out. Now, in reality, I think what would be a really good thought right now if you're Blue is why don't I make my own trebs and just try and take out the castle? Or I can use my siege to hit their siege. We're not seeing that. Now, if you're talking units with no upgrades, I feel like the duel we're about to have is pretty epic. We've got Elite Teutonic Knight, 17 base attack, 100 HP. That's really good. 
Again, no blacksmith upgrades hurts usually. But having a unit like that helps. And then on the other side, I mean, I think Cavalier usually going to do pretty good. 120 HP, 12 base attack, so actually more attack. Or sorry, more HP than the uh, Teutonic Knights. I think the Longbow is pretty good as well, right? Because Just because of all the extra range that Longbows typically have. And now we're actually going to have Chemistry 2, which will add extra attack to those Longbows. And Ballistics is in. So I actually prefer Red's position right now. Blue I worry about. I think Blue's trying to be too fancy schmancy. And Blue doesn't necessarily have the tools to actually go for a push. One trebuchet when your opponent ran out and sniped one trebuchet earlier probably isn't going to be the ticket. In the north, we have red stonewalling. I think red knows that blue doesn't know about this, so is trying to protect those guys. And then here, we have blue stonewalling. Um, and then also, like, these walls have created a little bit of, like, a choke point. <laughs> I, that's got to be the strategy, right? Is you, you want to almost make a maze for the enemy to run through. <laughs> Funnily enough, I feel like the maze strategy would be way better for Britons. It's better for the player who has the ranged units, not the uh, Teutonic Knights. But it could confuse the enemy, and like Red can see this too, so Red might feel a little intimidated. And now Blue actually can see Red's walls, and Blue's like, well, that's not good, so we're going to wall this up as well. And it's going to wall to the cliff. So we have a ton of walls right now. Keep in mind, blue, three relics. Also hasn't really committed to anything. Zero blacksmith upgrade. Red? Red seems to have a battle plan. Red wants crossbowmen. Red wants longbowmen. Also still no blacksmith upgrades, but does have chemistry. And I really worry for blue. I want blue to do this because Teutons are awesome. Not that Britons aren't. But what's your plan, man, besides the Petards and the Teutonic Knights? What, who do you think's the stronger unit, by the way? And I don't mean stronger as in, like, more applicable in the game. I mean, like, the buffer unit. The Batard guys? Or the Teutonic Knights? On one hand, the Batards, you can see their arms. You can see their... These are some hefty boys, right? They've got some strength to them. The Teutonic Knights, they might be shredded under there, but you can't really tell because they have all that armor. That armor's probably pretty heavy as well. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, Ironclad's coming in. So that means your Siege has extra melee armor, which does help. I don't know if it helps a ton, but it helps. And there's going to be more Trebs after that. Also, more walling from blue to the edge of the map. And blue also is going to take this stone. That stone's really important for this game. That's an extra 1,000 stone. Red just sitting here, watching his blue walls more. Doesn't seem to really be worried. Like, Red's staring at this part of the screen, and it's just like, I'm ready for when he comes. We will wait. The best warriors have patience. 52 army versus 51. Red could eventually run out of resources in here. Like, <laughs> we're not too far off from Red running out of resources. But again, it does seem like both players have forgotten about blacksmiths. Like, that that would immediately change the game if one player starts to get blacksmith upgrades. Also, does, does he even have a blacksmith? He just deleted that. And Villager's getting attacked by a tiger, but who really cares? I don't see a blacksmith in Red's town, so Red doesn't know about blacksmiths. Blue has one. And it's like the units are all around the blacksmith, so maybe he's played other games where you have to go stand next to it. And then your units get stronger. Loves the university, though. It's all over university and university upgrades. Okay. Blue wants to be the aggressor. Red really has no interest in that. Would love to see Red get both unique techs out of the castles. Red's certainly clicking the castles, right? So Warwolf and Yeoman would be huge swings. Extra range with Yeoman on your archers. And then Warwolf might even be more important. Splash damage. You also could upgrade to Arbalest, too, from this range if you're Red. Not every day you get to see Tootin' Keeps. 
That's cool that we got to see that here. These four Teutonic Knights still not wanting to join the party. I assume Blue has forgotten about that. And now Blue's starting to think upgrades. Blue's starting to think about more villagers. And Blue's going to go to the blacksmith now because Blue's thinking, what else can I do? Wait for it. Blue's going to go to the blacksmith right now. Right now. Ugh. Okay, I tried. I tried. Uh, we do have Heavy Cav Archer now being researched by Red. Uh, that actually does nothing for any of the units Red has currently. However, Arbalest does. Now, I remember, I, um, I used to think, like, obviously a Cav Archer is better than an Arbalest or a Longbowman because one guy's on a horse and the other's not. I didn't realize the intricacies and uh, some of the details that I know now. <laughs> Blue is now Palisade walling. <laughs> this is so cool, man. But Red sees this, and Red doesn't care. <laughs> Red doesn't care, man. There is a chance that Blue remembers the blacksmith. That's what I keep thinking. Like, because all Blue's going to do is Blue even researches Bombard Tower now. Blue is going to go right for red, right? And fall into red's trap. Red wants that. Now, normally you'd sit back if you had the relics. Red doesn't actually have that. So actually what blue should do is like never attack and just wait for, for red to come out. And maybe that's what we have here. Maybe we have a little standoff. I don't know. Yeah, from what I can see, red has never even built a blacksmith. Um, or at least had one eventually and deleted it, but blue has one. But they're so low elo, they just don't know about the blacksmith. And now a game changer, guys. Bombard cannons. These things will have 12 range. That's a really good addition. Because the longbows with the current upgrades only have 8 range. Also, gotta love the amount of monks we see here from red. Red's making so many men! So many holy men. Excuse me, that's what I meant to say. That's smart, but maybe not against Teutons. Teutons do resist conversion. All right. Cab archer's now coming out as well. From which archer range? Where's Red, Red producing the cat? Oh, it's for raiding. Ooh, okay. So it's these archer ranges. And uh, it'll only take Red 2,991 more hits to break through that wall. And Blue's researching the first Blacksmith upgrade. Uh-oh. This is a problem for Red. Blue has found the Blacksmith. And Blue's just going to click every upgrade. Now, these are just the Feudal Age upgrades. But that's better than nothing. And then that could lead to the Castle Age and the Imperial Age upgrades. Yeah, that's a very good point. Like, these monks are probably not meant for conversions. They're probably meant for healing. And Blue says, you know what? I'm kind of worried about this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make more walls, just in case. And I'm wondering what Blue's going to do, because, like, it almost feels like Blue's just going to wait for these things to come in, because Blue doesn't have a gate there. Blue can't really run in. Uh, Red is getting keep right now. This is an amazing game, dude. I love low elo legend games like this. If I could find this more elo more consistently, I would. Six trebs for red. And blue's got to be feeling good now. Four relics. I remember there was one here. The other one's actually here, which blue could also get. But I like, like, if red continues to... Oh! Oh, never mind. This is the same player. Um, <laughs> I got excited about Blacksmith upgrades. If Red continues to attack over here, it could distract Blue, and it could give Red an opportunity to run in this way. This is an awesome game. And if you're watching later on YouTube and you made it to this part of the game, I want you to say something in the comments about how you made it and how you're dedicated and how your mom is proud. But uh, this is epic, man. I'm happy, really happy with this. Oh, God, did he accidentally switch the wall piece? I hate it when that happens. So he took this one down to 2,700 HP, and then he clicked the other wall. And so now he had to start over on a fresh wall. 
But hey, those villagers died. Their family's not going to be happy about that. Funerals can't be held. Funerals can only be held after the war. These villagers hear about it. They immediately leave. And we have even a castle here from Blue. Just in case, man. Just in case. Also, Duke Canada. What's up, man? Nice to see you. I like all the random animals that have had to witness so many things in this game, like this Ibex here. I noticed there was a zebra over here earlier. Oh, it's a horse. Excuse me. They're just underneath the tower. Red's trying to sneak right now. I don't know exactly where Red was going, but Red's going to get a peek at what the opponent has, and that's not going to make Red really that happy. So again, Blue went for... Wet, uh, sorry, I'm getting so excited I can't speak. Blue went for one round of blacksmith upgrades. So just futile. And one more round, and I'm starting to feel like Blue's going to win this game. Because Red is out of gold to mine. It says Red has gold income, but I don't... Oh, no, here. Okay. There's, like, maybe a thousand more gold there. Red does know about the market, though, and continues to sell a lot of wood and food, which is really helpful and really smart. And has 50 Arbalest. Two hours later. this These Cav Archers continue to try and break through. Apparently, Siege isn't something that Red's thinking of. As I say, that Red's actually going to make that. Blue forgot about this gold and now has been reminded of it because Blue's been paying attention here. And so Blue's going to take that gold, also fortify up with more towers. I don't think Blue actually wants to push, guys. Well, hold on. Oh, boy. Let's go. Where are you headed to, Red? Or Blue, where are you going? Five Teutonic Knights hop into a ram. And I don't have the punchline to the joke yet. We don't even know if it's going to be a joke. It could just be an awesome story. Oh, my God. He switched the wall piece again. Oh, God. All right. Well, they'll get through with the Treb, hopefully, because this isn't going to work out with the Cav Archers. All right, Blue is using the Trebs to take a peek over here. Now, both of them have Siege Engineers. Red's Trebs are ready, though. That was really smart thinking from Red, because I doubt Red's paying attention to this right now. And that's just not going to work for you, Blue. At least I don't think it is. Blue clearly just clicked the castle, and the Trebs have been firing for a while here. I don't know if the blue really realizes, but the Cavalier's on the way in. Now, he has to slalom his way through. <laughs> he has to slalom his way through to finish off that Treb. And he's going to finish off the next Treb as well. I still love that. Like, I want to see a full army run through that. <laughs> oh, God. Where did the Teutonic Knights go? They're still there. Okay. Oh, my God. Blue's going to try it again. Blue is going to try it again. This is going to be so epic. He has to go through his own maze, though. So earlier in this game, Blue used Batards to bust down a wall. And then after busting down the wall, went in and sniped the opponent's trebs. Blue is going to try it again. Oh, there's a hole there. Ooh, sneaky. All right, well, no petards, actually. It's just going to be the Teutonic Knights and the Ram. Now, the Ram's going to go down pretty fast, and it's a fortified wall, and he's attacking uphill. But the petards are going to come in. Oh, the Rams are soaking up the arrow fire. That could be part of the thinking here from Blue. So Blue's got a big brain, I'll say that much. But it might be too big, you know? Like, someone's so smart, they just don't do the simple things in life because they want to be complicated and show off. That's Blue for you. Batards are hitting the wall, not really having the most success. Red's going to clear all the Teutonic Knights, mainly because of the castle fire. And the Ram Teutonic Knight strategy, not looking too hot at the moment. However, Blue, we appreciate you and we salute you because that was epic. Little whoop surprise over here. Hold the phone. With no castle fire, you never know. Did Red click the Ram? Teutonic Knights will actually beat the Cavalier, if I'm not mistaken, because of all the melee armor. Hold the phone. Hold on. By the way, Red is does have a trebuchet over here, has used this castle, and has used the trebs to break down things. You also have petards from Red, because Red says that's a good idea. 
And Blue's weak little ram over here has found a pocket of space to be able to bust down the walls without there being any army. These things have 11 melee armor. And now we have Bombard Cannons from Blue as well. And more Teutonic Knights. Blue is losing ground on this side, but may or may not be ready. We'll see. The walls have been shot down by the cannons. The Teutonic Knights are in on the trebs. Red is, I'm sure, is very overwhelmed. Red doesn't have a lot of extra gold here. That's a big concern. Now, the Teutonic Knights get shrecked by the castle, but there's enough of them where they could maybe take out another treb. And... No. They've been clicked beyond or something. I'm not sure exactly what happened there. You did see the monks were considering some type of a conversion. Probably what happened is Red used all the units to click one unit. We have 163 population for Red, who has zero relics. We have Blue. Oh, God. Not the cannons. Oh, God. You don't want to stack them like this, guys. You can lose multiple cannons sometimes. Look, can he... It sucks that he can't range the trebs. He's got to roll around to be able to hit the trep, but he'll be able to get it because it, Red's not leaving the base. And... Bonk, trep goes down. Now blue run away. Is that the strat? Back up now? Um... Okay, no micro is best micro. That's blue's approach. The cannons are doing a great job against these elite longbows. The skirms are also here as well, and Red regrets leaving. Red doesn't know what to do. Red clicked the treb, and Red is falling apart. Saying that, Red still has the population lead. Red still has 90 army. But Red has lost a lot of valuable gold army over the last couple minutes here. We have Cavalier now being researched as well from Blue. And... You know, like, these skirmishers are actually going to do a good enough job at holding here. Hold on, Blue. Where are you going? Okay, well, who needs cannons anyways? Arbalest, obviously, not having the attack upgrades, also not having the range. But, okay, bit of revenge. Blue has lost a lot of cannons over the last engagement. And here comes all the monks, dude. <laughs> it's a holy crusade. Let's go. Also, there's nothing stopping Red from selling food for gold, right? Like, that that's still really possible. Red could also maybe snag this relic at one point. But Blue seems to have built up enough confidence to go for some type of push here. Blue's walls are causing problems for these trebs. Teutonic Knights are going to go through. Still keeping an eye on this. Like, Red is rewalling this in case Blue ever wants to run through. Red is also rewalling this. That's Red's favorite thing, and Blue's gonna kill most of the arbs here. And is simply just going for the walls with these trebs, but is going for the castle with this treb, and that treb's gonna stay up. I don't know if Red can do it, guys. Like, what's gonna allow Red to hold this is bringing the army out of the castles. Red has so much ranged army that needs to come out of the castles. Oh my god, that's so many monks. <laughs> I can't convert siege either. Uh, being Britons. Oh, man. How do you deal with the Rams is my question. Well, I guess you convert Teutonic Knights. Um. Oh, God. Blue, have mercy on these men. They're men of God. Okay, there you go. They're all going to convert that guy. Watch him go and watch him kill the, the cannons now. He's actually helping a lot. <laughs> this guy's a beast. <laughs> That was the best Teutonic Knight he could have converted. <laughs> this guy's amazing. He has three kills already. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> the monks are trying to run now. Obviously, like, the Teutonic Knight really could be needed on the rams. Uh, monks still trying to convert more of them. Arbalest chewing up many of the Teutonic Knights. Many of the holy men have died. Bombard Cannon's still getting some kills from behind. There is a Cavalier in there, which could maybe pop out. But Red is falling apart, guys. Red doesn't have a push. He's still trying to go through the wall with Cav Archers over there. This castle could go down. The Arbalest are like... They're just not it against the Rams. And I think Red's realizing one of the weaknesses of Britons. Usually, it's the weakness against Siege Rams. 
But Siege, the hole from blue has been so much more effective this game. And the Siege over here now from blue is actually going after that castle as well. So like, both castles could end up going down. Red does actually defend here. Red does hold. Red still has the lead. And now Red is going to be able to snipe all the Siege, right? You've got like two Trebs here still. You've got a Bombard Cannon. That's going to go down. Oh! Bombard Tower, though. That helps. Blue is going to make more Teutonic Knights. Is also going to make Hand Cannons. Now, Hand Cannons are great against infantry in this game. Though I can see why a lot of people would think, wow, dude with a gun is going to be way better than dudes with an arrow. Um, that's actually not how the game works, however. However, the castle will fall! Boom! Thankfully for blue, blue has relics, right? Because... We're seeing a lot of gold units go down here. I, however, love the Cavalier Edition from Blue. There's only two of them, but it's good after some of the upgrades we talked about earlier. And now Red has zero castles to defend. Uh-oh. Mm, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Red's trying to rewall. It's not going to happen, though. The Teutonic Knights are going to be able to get through here and take out the Treb. Group of Arbalest. They're going to have 11 kills here. Can they get more? Oh, God. Teutonic Knight just got shot in the face with a cannonball. Pressure's on. Late game Age of Empires. Low elo. Sub 300 elo. <laughs> Red still is clicking different walls. <laughs> He'll get through eventually. Uh, can you imagine if he somehow got through there and there was a hole and it changed the whole game? Blue is losing all the siege. Teutonic Knights and Hand Cannons, not necessarily the units that you would want up against ARBs. Still four relics means there's longer, uh, there, there's more gold income over a long game for our blue player. This has been a duel and a half. The red is about to hit 100 kills, I think. A red click the treb. Now red has no castle to fall back to. This is going to be painful. Blue's Teutonic Knights have pulled back. Red still has some Arbalest over here. Let's see if Red can pull his, himself together here. These Arbalest are trying to run over to the other side. They're dying. Pain everywhere. Whoa, Blue with no hesitation like is like, let's go. He's just going to run right into the town. If he's feeling extra spicy, he could just go for the houses. He's gonna chase those trebuchets down. Oh man, this is the this is the same farming eco that has brought all this food to Red. The nine thousand food that Red has, and Red rings the bell to bring the people home. And I, when I said it, I was joking, but Blue is actually taking out the houses. <laughs> it's like fine, you can hide in that town center, but you will have nowhere to live. What an epic game. See if Blue can finish this one off. The hand cannons are go out here, hit the wood line, and the villagers that haven't made it to the TC. You know it's bad when you've deployed trebuchets against Teutonic Knights in your own base. It actually could work. There's no friendly fire, so you're not going to take out your own buildings. Oddly enough, but... It still just feels like a game that, that Red just won't give up on, but Red has to give up on. Red's making more army. It's been a long game. So Red doesn't want to give it up yet, and it's maybe hoping that if he could break through one of these walls, he could get through here. But Blue has already thought that through, and Blue's like, I killed the monks! I'll burn down your temple! Get out of here! This is awesome. And then you could actually pick up the, uh, the bell, take it home, melt it down, and then you get some gold, right? That's how that works. Maybe I'm thinking of something else. I mean, the Arbalest have come over here, right? Again, a big and easy fix for Red is Red just has to learn about the Fletching upgrade, right? Both players learn about a few more Blacksmith upgrades, and then suddenly the rest of the game goes a lot better for them. But Arbalest is still the right unit. It, it might seem like these Teutonic Knights are too tanky if you're in Red's current position, but that's just because you're missing some ups. Cav Archer update. Oh my god, they're so close. Where is it? I can't even click it. That's how low it is. There it is. 200 HP. Let's go, baby! 
Let's go. He's gonna make it. This is for all the haters who doubted red. Okay, I can't wait. We're, we're gonna see. We got a tower. Now from blue to fortify the position. Double tower, actually. And they're bombard towers, too. Oh, that's epic. Bombard towers, they're gonna one-shot everything they hit. Except for the siege. And, and, like, this is such a good position to sit under with your siege. Mm. Blue still has gold to mine, too, by the way. Still plenty of gold over here. And the Trebs are going for the town center. That's the only town center in this region remaining for red. And that means the villagers can't hide anymore. And, uh, well, there are Balest inside, actually. <laughs> but red resigns. And what? Wait, wait, wait. Did he get through the wall? No! Red, you were so close. You were so close. 95 more hits. <laughs> oh, man. I just wanted to uh, him at least to break through the wall so he could run through and see if he could do something with it. I mean, this guy was waiting. He's been holding the gate open for the last hour. He's waiting for them. But, well, I think we know and Red knew that this game was probably over regardless. What a slog. What a match that was. Only 154 kills for Blue, but Blue did some good eco damage in this game. And Blue's map control was actually what won in the game. From the walling to the towers, to obviously the relics as well. Um, was able to take some of the extra stones and golds on the map more than his opponent was. Well, that's not actually true because I think Red took this entire one. But listen, there were a lot of things that Blue did incorrectly in this game. Could have had more villagers, could have had more upgrades, could have gone for different types of units. But something that Blue thought about in the very early stages of this game were map vision, map control, and strategy. And Blue made it very difficult for his opponent to ever have confidence, to ever rush. Red never did that. And even though Red turtled up, Blue was able to slowly find a way. I mean, the best play of this game was the use of the batards um, to kill the initial Treb. That was epic. Uh, then, of course, he tried it again later on. Red really never felt like he had an answer to it. But I hope people enjoyed that game. I mean, for Red, that is now the second time I've seen you lose a game with the Britons. I wish you the best, obviously. Red, I think it's fair to say that, like, you could have easily won that game, right, with a few more tweaks. So Red could probably jump up to, like, 350, 400 ELO, get a nice little win streak as long as Red remembers the Blacksmith, honestly. The eco side was great. Could have maybe gone for a few more relics, but that was fine. What a game, though, man. Age of Empires 2 is so much depth. There's so many cool things you can do. What an epic Civ matchup that was. Trying to see if there's any stats. Look at the amount of researches they both went for. 44. They both went for 44. What are the odds of that? Now, like, 20% of the researches for red were monk technologies. <laughs> uh, whereas, you know, some of the additional researches for blue were more applicable. But still, that was really cool. And Blue kind of made everything that game, too. And there you can see the APM, the speed. Um, not sure exactly what was happening at this time, but this is when the players were clicking the most. Could have been during these fights, obviously. That was a fun one. Very happy with how that game went. I'm really happy Blue won, right? Like, Blue definitely seemed like the underdog economically. Blue doesn't have as many games as Red, even though Blue is higher ELO. And how often do you get to see Elite Teutonic Knights in a game? I mean, come on. It's just sick stuff.